what is up guys, that's it here. In this video I'll go over a build for Season 6 Monks that you could do with the set you receive for free at the start. Aside from the progression spec, I'll also go over a build which you could use to transition into the endgame. Let's go! Every new season offers you a one-time opportunity to quickly get a character to decent farming potential through a system called Hadrix's Gifts. The gifts are obtained by completing stages of the season journey, with three different achievements, each granting two pieces of a predetermined class-specific set. You can view the stages of the season journey at any time by clicking the yellow chapter button in the top right corner of the screen, to the right of the difficulty marker. In this example we're using a Crusader, but this is applicable to every class. Each Hadrix gift appears as in-game mail, accessible via the mail button in the lower left corner of the screen, next to the chat button. Claiming the gift puts it in your inventory, where you can open it similarly to a bounty cache. The first of Hadrix gifts is rewarded upon reaching level 70. The second of Hadrix gifts is rewarded upon killing Iswal, the mini-boss in the Great Span, the area connected to the Silver Spire level 1, on Torment 2 or higher. Note the difference to Season 5, where the required boss was Zoltan Cool. The third and final of Hadrix's gifts is rewarded upon soloing Greater Rift level 20. If you prefer to gauge your capability to complete it in time, it's roughly equivalent to a Torment 4 Rift. After you open the three gifts, you'll have all the necessary pieces to attain the full set bonus. The first demonstration is of the Torment progression variant. As usual, to guarantee the quality of the build, the Torment 10 demonstration has been done with reset paragons, no augments on gear and legendary gems upgraded to the bare minimum of level 25. The build relies heavily on the damage of your Mystic Ally summons, automatically called in full number at your side through the inner 6 piece set bonus. Your job is primarily in assisting your army by leading it to dense areas, using Cyclone Strike to pull enemies in one convenient place, while simultaneously triggering the powers of Bindings of the Lesser Gods and Lefebvre Soliloquy. Once clumped up, place an inner sanctuary and pummel away with Way of the Hundred Fists. This generator is needed both for the protection of Spirit Guards and the Assimilation Damage Buff. In a big fight, Pop the Mystic Ally cooldown during a cold cycle of Convention of Elements to receive the active benefits of all Mystic Ally runes, including crowd control, healing and considerable AoE from the Water Ally. To protect yourself, use Epiphany, Desert Shroud or Dashing Strike away from harm. Mystic Ally is a vital part of the build. You'll be amplifying the Ally's damage with the Inner Set bonus and double their number with the Curtis Boots. Selection of a particular rune is not needed. You'll receive all five at the same time from the inner six piece bonus. Besides their passive presence, Mystic Ally has an active component on a reasonable 30 second cooldown. Once activated, enemies will be damaged, frozen, and knocked up from Fire Ally, Water Ally, and Earth Ally, respectively, and you have your health restored from Enduring Ally and Spirit replenished by Air Ally. The best generator for the build is Way of the Hundred Fists, whose rapid triple attack adds a damage buffing angle to the build with the rune Assimilation, adding 5% damage for each enemy hit during a brief 5 second window, it synergizes perfectly with the timing, bursty nature of the build. If you draw a big fight and build up your Assimilation stacks directly before hitting the Mystic Ally cooldown, you enjoy a significant increase to your overall damage. To clump up enemies for the convenience of your Mystic Allies and to maximize assimilation stacks, you'll be using Cyclone Strike with one of the longest range pulls in the game, the 34 yard Implosion Rune. This skill is vital to the build due to the bindings of the Lesser Gods and Lefebvre's Soliloquy legendary bonuses, explained further in the gearing section. Once enemies are drawn in for the kill, you'll be placing an inner sanctuary circle at their feet to speed up the fight. On a reasonable 20 second base cooldown, this skill will serve as a protective circle when fighting within, further entrapping enemies with an 80% slow and increasing their damage taken by 30% through the Forbidden Palace rune. Note that the Torment Progression variation replaces this skill with Breath of Heaven Zephyr for its significant movement speed bonuses, while the Exploding Palm variation, of which I'll talk a little further, replaces this skill with Exploding Palm Impending Doom. Epiphany is a staple in the monk arsenal, 
allowing you to stick yourself and as a consequence your allies on a target to ensure the kill. Epiphany also increases your spirit regeneration by 20 per second, ensuring that even the most tenacious cyclone strike spam will remain uninterrupted. And perhaps most important of all, the Desert Shroud Rune strengthens your defenses with 50% damage reduction while active. Keep in mind that this build does not have cooldown reduction in abundance and plays around the Epiphany downtimes instead. You have to kite, draw monster attention and focus on survival while Desert Shroud is off and get in the thick of fights and try to burst enemies down while it's active. As a final note, when you're doing non-threatening content such as Torment Runs, you can replace this ability for Mantra of Conviction, taking advantage of the party-wide 30% movement speed bonus from the Annihilation Rune. Dashing Strike is an irreplaceable mobility tool in the Monk arsenal, allowing swift and fluid transition between areas, in and out of danger as the rift dictates. With two charges stored by default, you can cover decent ground or open a fight of your choice at an advantage, with the defensive bonuses of the Blinding Speed rune. Alternatively, you can choose the attack speed oriented Radiance rune to improve your single target damage. This concludes the overview of the active skills, now let us look through the passives. Beacon of Vitar is a solid foundation for high skill uptime, providing a 20% chunk to your cooldown reduction. The sizable 60 and 30 second timers for Epiphany and Mystic Ally respectively are important enough to demand a high cooldown reduction goal. A mainstay in the Monk arsenal of passives, Harmony fuels your all resistance with 40% of your single elemental resistance per piece of gear. For example, a 100 fire resistance roll on the boots will add a 100 to your sheet fire resistance and add 40 to your other resists. A well-geared monk will usually sport secondary resistances in all the gear slots that are able to roll them, adding significantly to his overall toughness. Seize the Initiative is one of the best damage-oriented passives at the disposal of monks, providing you with a temporary attack speed increase when engaging enemies over 75% health, translating into faster pet attack speed for the Mystic Ally build. As you get more comfortable with the build, you'll learn to kite into and pull additional enemies or freshly spawned boss adds to effectively extend the benefits from Seize the Initiative. Finally, the Unity passive will contribute to your damage with a nice 20% additive bonus. You'll easily max out the capabilities of the passive with the trio of ally-oriented mantras originating from the Inner set and the mystic ally summons at your side counting towards the requirement. As this is the least important passive in the setup, hardcore heroes can safely swap it out for the second life of near-death experience. The build incorporates the complete Inus Mantra set, taking 6 of the 7 available pieces and opening up the jewelry for the Endless Walk set and its damage multiplication bonuses. Rolls-wise, this mystic ally-centric playstyle takes good advantage of cooldown reduction and skill damage affixes. Note that depending on your preferred spec, a pure mystic ally pet build or the exploding palm variation, you have to adjust skill rolls, taking mystic ally percentage on the chest and shoulders for the former or exploding palm percentage on the helm and boots for the latter. Both crit stats alongside dexterity and vitality are sought after on Ina's gloves, and crit chance is needed on Ina's helm. Ina's belt and Ina's pants can be dedicated purely to toughness. Finally, high damage range, good dexterity and mystic ally percentage rolls, as well as vitality are the best stats on Ina's weapon. Not skipping on any of the 6 set pieces required to obtain the full Ina set bonus allows you to split between offense and defense in the jewelry slots. One of the 2.4 reworks, the Endless Walk set, the Compass Rose Ring and Traveler's Pledge Amulet, add a unique mechanic that slowly increases your damage by up to 100% if you remain stationary and drains it away and increases your damage reduction while moving. This dynamic fits the Ina playstyle as you dashing strike to the next big fight, cyclone strike for density and use way of the 100 fists in one spot for extended periods of time. The remaining ring slot will be taken by convention of elements. The ring cycles shape the entire playstyle of the build, as the multiplicative nature of the elemental bonuses is responsible for a huge chunk of your damage potential. During speed farm it is recommended to swap away from the endless walk set, as it promotes a static fighting playstyle that is unfit for torments. Use the more offensive focus and restraint combo instead, 
ideally paired with a good Hellfire amulet with a synergistic speed farm passive like Fleet Footed. The Curtis Boots are a crucial piece for the setup, doubling your Mystic Ally summons and thus doubling the effectiveness of the Ina 6 piece set bonus, as well as several passive and active effects of the skill itself the Air Ally Spirit Regeneration, the Fire Ally Damage Bonuses, etc. Two items have been introduced in patch 2.4 to assist the Mystic Ally playstyle with additional damage and survivability. They have identical skill conditions and a 5 second duration. The offensive item is Bindings of the Lesser Gods, a bracer that amplifies Mystic Ally damage against enemies affected by Cyclone Strike. The defensive item is Lefebvre Soliloquy, reducing damage taken by up to 50% after casting Cyclone Strike. Your three jewelry sockets will be taken up by the legendary gems Bane of the Trapped, Enforcer and Pain Enhancer. Bane of the Trapped is a potent source of additional damage, as it is its own multiplier in your total damage calculation. The gem will be procced by Water Ally, Forbidden Palace and its own level 25 property when in melee range, where the Ina Monk fights by default. Enforcer is a pet-oriented gem that both increases Mystic Ally damage and lessens the damage that summons take. Note that the damage bonuses of the gem have been changed from additive to multiplicative in patch 2.41, reinforcing it as a pet build staple. Pain Enhancer is synergistic with the density pulling nature of the build and helps you compensate for the inferior two-handed attack rate of Ina's weapon with a massive attack speed bonus from the clumped up and bleeding enemies. The Kanai's Cube recommendations are as follows, Flying Dragon for the weapon slot, Spirit Guards for the armor slot and Unity for the jewelry slot. Cubing the Flying Dragon provides you with one of the strongest weapon procs in the game, a chance to double your attack speed with a separate multiplier, an incomparable bonus for a pet build that benefits so much from increased attack speed. When doing speed farm content, however, it is strongly recommended that you change this slot to Ingium, taking advantage of the shorter fights for a massive boost to your Mystic Ally burst uptime. Stored in the armor slot, Spirit Guards will multiply your damage reduction by 40% for 3 seconds after using a Spirit Generator, another significant reminder to use Way of the Hundred Fists regularly. Stacking with your other sources of damage mitigation, these bracers will add helpful survivability to a build that constantly pulls enemies in. When doing torment runs, you can substitute Spirit Guards for Gold Wrap and substitute Pain Enhancer with Boon of the Hoarder, making toughness a non-concern. The jewelry slot will be taken up by Unity, as it provides you with unparalleled damage reduction when paired with another on the follower, plus an immortality item for him. Like the armor slot, you can exchange unity with convention of elements based on which item rolled better. Additionally, if you're doing normal rifts and have a gold wrap cubed, it is advisable to augment it with an avarice band in the jewelry slot. In the paragon points, max out movement speed to the 25% cap and spend the rest on dexterity in the core section. Prioritize cooldown reduction and then crit damage and crit chance in offense. All resistance followed by armor and then life percentage in defense. And finally, focus on area damage and life per hit in utility. It is also important to talk of the exploding palm variation of the build. Created with pushing GR limits in mind, this high-end monk build takes the signature exploding palm ability and spreads it with deadly efficiency through the empowered mystic allies of the Inner set. The EP variation relies heavily on timing exploding palms detonation with the cold damage rotation of your convention of elements. Once enemies are clumped up with Cyclone Strike, assault them with Way of the Hundred Fists to gain the assimilation damage buff and keep a close eye on enemies' health. During the lightning cycle and especially during the physical rotation of convention of elements, which directly precedes the cold cycle, seek out lower health trash enemies and apply Exploding Palm to them. As you reach the cold rotation, Make sure that you have Cyclone Strike at least once in the last 5 seconds for the damage buff of Bindings of the Lesser Gods, and ideally that you have Assimilation stacks up. With that out of the way, pop the Mystic Ally cooldown for a spike of damage and do your best to finish off at least one of the Exploding Palmed monsters. This will trigger the immensely buffed detonation of the Cold Rune Impending Doom. As previously mentioned, the Exploding Palm variation replaces Inner Sanctuary with Exploding Palm. The rune of choice is the Cold Damage Impending Doom. 
towering over its peers with 6300% weapon damage per detonation, spreading like the plague with the Gungdo gear unique property. In the Exploding Palm variation, you will be substituting Enforcer and Pain Enhancer for Bane of the Stricken and Esoteric Alteration. Bane of the Stricken builds up your damage multiplicatively in prolonged fights and has a level 25 bonus specifically targeting Rift Guardians, assisting AoE heavy builds in a struggle against single target high health enemies. The Ina EP Monk is a textbook example of such a build and makes good use of this gem. Esoteric Alteration is one of the strongest sources of elemental mitigation, bringing a welcome toughness increase to the Spirit Guard's lacking EP variant. In the Exploding Palm variation, you will be swapping in Fist of Astorask for the weapon slot and Gungdo gear for the armor slot. The Fist of Astorask increases the on-death explosion damage of Exploding Palm by 300%. As a true multiplier to the base damage of the skill, it essentially quadruples the output of this variation's primary source of burst. Stored in the armor slot, Gungdo gear has a simple but devastating effect. It applies Exploding Palm to enemies caught within the radius of a detonated Exploding Palm, producing the signature screen-wide destruction. Similarly to the default spec, this slot is interchangeable with Bindings of the Lesser Gods. And this is it for the in-depth look at the Ina Mystic Ally and Exploding Palm Monk progression in patch 2.41. You can find the full written version linked in the description below, as well as a Google spreadsheet linking to my detailed guides for every build in Diablo 3 of course in the process of revision to patch 2.41. I hope you enjoyed the guide, and if you did, I would appreciate your subscription to my channel. Talk to me on Twitter and Facebook that I linked below, and I'll see you guys next time.